Welcome to Type-C Tech Reviews. Today I'm doing a review of the Dell S2722 DGM gaming monitor. I'm gonna go over the pros and the cons and my own real life experience that I've had with this monitor. And if at any point during the video, if you wanna check out this exact same monitor, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, and Canada. I do got you guys, but let's jump into the video. All right, right off the bat, this is a 27 inch curved VA panel with a resolution of 1440p. This has a good PPI or pixels per inch to make text clear and crisp and to make games clear and crisp again. So that's something that you want. That's about 109, which is pretty good. And then the curve, it is a 1500R curve. So it's nothing insane like Samsung Odyssey monitors, but it definitely adds to immersion a little bit and it takes off eye strain. When I look at 27 inch flat, panels, I typically have to adjust to them a little bit and then they're good. Now the curve doesn't add a ton, especially since it's not a 32 inch monitor where it's like a little bit out of your peripheral view. So being 27 inch and curved just adds a little bit of fun to it, but it's nothing like a deal breaker and you definitely don't need a curve. But again, yeah, it's nice to have. All right, the refresh rate is keeping with the industry's new standard of 165 Hertz, which is good to see. I didn't see basically any screen tearing while testing games, which is really good. Now, this is obviously um, the panel, but then a little bit of help from FreeSync Premium. This obviously has FreeSync Premium. Pretty much every gaming monitor out there has it at this point. Now, uh, beyond that, having 165 Hertz is high enough where you can do some competitive gaming if your system can hit 165 frames per second. Now, my system can easily hit 165 frames per second on pretty much any game max settings at 1440p. So that's good for me. But if your system can't hit those high frames at 1440p, then you might have to get a new graphics card. But I think at this point, most people probably can hit 165 frames per second at 1440p, at least on lower graphical settings. Yeah, you can definitely play some competitive games like Warzone or CSGO with that refresh rate. All right, now a huge thing with this monitor, which is a really, really big reason you might wanna get this, is the input lag is like very, very low uh, for monitors in this class. So if you're doing a lot of competitive games or things that need a lot of immediate response from you, having a little input lag is huge. This is where it is noticeable to have a lower input lag. This thing is only hitting four milliseconds input lag, which is nuts. That's, that's crazy. Very, very impressive stuff. So if you just want a monitor that is like very, very fast and has very little input lag, or if you're doing competitive games, this one's definitely uh, should be on your list. All right, now let's talk brightness. This is another place that it excels. This is rated for 350 nits. It's advertised as 350 nits, but this really gets closer to 400 nits, which is pretty awesome. So games are gonna be vibrant. They're gonna look really nice. But besides that, if you're in a well-lit environment, Maybe you're in a bright room or some like direct sunlight. Maybe you're uh, in front of a window or behind a window. The brightness paired with the matte display are pretty much gonna cancel most reflections out. So you're not really gonna see a whole lot of reflections even when the screen's gonna be dark because again, it's super, super bright and it's got that nice matte coating. So yeah, reflection stuff won't be that much of an issue. But that's really cool. A lot of VA panels used to, and I'm not talking like a while ago, I'm talking like a year ago, a couple months ago, used to all have pretty low brightness levels, but we're seeing newer VA panels just up that brightness which is a huge, awesome thing that's happening. All right, now let's talk colors. This hits 99% of the sRGB color space. We're not seeing the DCI P3 color space here, but again, we're not really expecting that at this price point and being a VA panel. Um, but something that I don't really like, which is really great that it hits 99% of the sRGB color space, but this thing only outputs eight bits of color. There is no FRC or frame rate control to then output 10 bits of color. So we're only maxing out at eight bits of color. That's not a deal breaker for me because this is a very gaming centered monitor. So if what you're doing is the majority gaming, absolutely you could edit some YouTube videos on here. But if you're really looking to do some really, really color accurate work that you need, this is definitely not the monitor for you. So it's not a deal breaker that this doesn't output 10 bits of color. However, I did have to mention that. All right, contrast ratio is obviously amazing because this is a VA panel. This is 3000 to one, which is really good. Typical IPS panels are gonna be 1001. So that's the biggest, probably one of the biggest reasons that you're gonna be looking at a VA panel over in IPS panels, that contrast ratio. You're not gonna get those super deep blacks on an IPS like you will on a VA. So 3001 is good. It's pretty typical for VA panels. It's not insane. Some VA panels go like 5001. Uh, but yeah, the blacks are gonna be deep. And especially when you're in a dark room, it's gonna hate you because when it goes black screen, it's gonna feel really, really dark. So that's nice. All right, response time and ghost 
interesting. This is another place where this monitor excels where typical other VA panels do not. This hits a two millisecond gray to gray response time. And for a VA panel, that's very good. But how does that equate to ghosting? Well, there are three different response time settings. There is like fast, then there's like super, and then there's like a stream, something like that. I know the top one, the fastest one is extreme, and that's what you're gonna have to put it in to get that two millisecond gray to gray response time. Now, when you do have it in extreme, a lot of monitors will have pixel overshooting or inverse ghosting to basically be able to market a higher gray to gray response time even though it causes inverse ghosting and you're not really gonna use it. However, this monitor does not do that. When you do put it in extreme, it decreases the ghosting by a lot, a ton. When you get this, it's not gonna be extreme. It's gonna be in the slowest response time setting. You put it all the way in extreme, so much better. The ghosting is very, very good for a VA panel and there's no pixel overshooting or inverse ghosting. So when you get this monitor, automatically go into those settings, go to the response time settings and change it to extreme, the fastest one, because it's absolutely the one you're gonna want in all the time. I reviewed a ton of VA panels and this is definitely one of the better ones with ghosting. All right, now let's talk the menu system. This is the Dell Alienware kind of menu system. Uh, there are a couple different buttons going on. You have a dedicated on and off button, which I really, really like. It's a very responsive one. You just click it in, it feels nice. And it immediately turns the monitor off or on, which some like LG's monitors actually take a little bit which doesn't really bother me, but this one just feels more instant and a little bit more satisfying. But then besides that, you have four extra buttons for the menu system and then a joystick. Now, those four extra buttons are supposed to be a quicker menu thing. Like you can actually get through everything through just the joystick, but those four are supposed to be faster. So you can click them and, and it's quicker. However, I found that they just aren't quicker and they're not really implemented that well because a lot of times when I put in my hand back there, I'm not gonna feel around for four buttons to figure out which one's where and then click it. I just use the joystick. So it's not a problem that those buttons are there. I just end up using the joystick exclusively and that works fine. The menu system is pretty, definitely prettier than something like Scepter's, but it's nowhere near uh, LG's menu system, which is unbelievable, but everything's pretty easy to find and there's pretty much no learning curve to using it. So that's good. All right, stand and build quality. This thing is awesome with that. All the materials are really good. It uses a lot of plastic with a metal kind of inside. So the base is all very strong metal with then a plastic outside with all nice edges and it looks pretty. A Little bit of gloss accents, it looks nice. Everything is strong. It has height adjustability and tilt, no swivel, no rotation, but I don't mind that. But a big thing is one, I think the stand looks really nice and it's very stable, but it has integrated cable management in it that works really well and easily hides the cable. So cable management, super easy to hide those cables. You don't need any like twisties or Velcro or anything. You just literally plug the monitor in and you can hide the cables right away, which is actually not as common as you would think. But yeah, they did it great with this one. All right, moving on to VESA compatibility. This is actually really good. It is VESA compatible with 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter VESA mounts, which is what we expect. Some companies cheap out and do the 75, which I don't like, but this one does keep it 100. Now, this monitor is under 10 pounds without the stand, so it's really easy to mount to something like a monitor arm. I will link below a monitor arm for your desk. No drilling or anything required, just clamps onto your desk. One that I recommend that I've actually tested with this monitor, and it's super budget friendly, so definitely check it. Amazon links below for the US, UK, and Canada for a recommended monitor arm, but let's get on to the overall verdict. Overall, this is a fantastic 27 inch VA gaming panel for only 340 bucks, which is quite a good price for everything that it gives you. And taking into account ghosting, brightness, and that incredibly low input lag, this is the most recommended gaming VA panel on this channel right now. Again, guys, if you wanna check out this exact same monitor, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, and Canada. I do got you guys, but I really, really liked this monitor. I typically like IPS panels more than VA panels, but this one, I found it incredibly easy to just sit down and game and use every day. Another big thing that I didn't really mention because I don't typically mention this, but I will be doing a comparison between the Scepter, the one that I just reviewed, and this one, because they're so similar. But a huge difference is actually that the viewing angles, typical VA panels will wash out from side to side. This one takes quite a bit to start washing out, which is really good. Whereas some others like the Scepter one, even though it was a fantastic monitor, I loved that monitor, it washes out a little bit quicker. That's also a thing to consider when getting this monitor. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video and it helped you out, help me out and throw a like below. And if you enjoy monitor reviews, monitor comparisons, monitor reviews, gaming monitors, I do a ton of those. That's the only thing I do on this channel, Type C Tech Reviews. So please consider subscribing below. But this was Type C Tech Reviews and I'll see you guys in the next video.